China's Heavenly Palace, the Tiangong, is the most advanced space station ever deployed by the human race. And that is a big deal, but it's also not really something that people in the Western world really understand very well or even know that much about. By this point, we are all pretty familiar with seeing people on the International Space Station, so we have a pretty good idea about living in space. But life for Chinese crews on the Tiangong is like nothing else we have seen before in human spaceflight. So let's take a look at what they've been working on up there. The Tiangong now consists of three modules forming a T-shaped space station that orbits around 400 kilometers above the Earth's surface. At its heart lies the Tianhe Core Command Module, which means Harmony of the Heavens. It was first launched in April 2021 and currently serves as the station's operational nerve center. At the large end of the core module is a working area for both technical operations and scientific experiments. This is also where the propulsion section for the station is located, which maintains orbital control. At the module's end is a docking port that is specifically for the Tianzhou cargo craft. This is also a future docking port for the Chinese Space Telescope. Moving up to the smaller cylindrical section of the Tianhe, this is the main crew quarters. There are individual bunks for three crew members and all of the necessary hygiene facilities, like the space toilet and showers. The Tianhe is also the module that supports the station's main robotic arm, which is 10 meters in length. It's a little shorter than the Canada Arm 2 that is currently in operation at the ISS, which is 17 meters long, but the Chinese Arm does have a similar capability and the possibility for expansion. The Wenxian Experiment Module, which translates as Heavenly Quest, was added in July 2022 and functions as a combination crew quarters and research laboratory. There are four experimental rack spaces on the Wenxian containing research projects on life sciences, biotechnology, and the effects of variable gravity. There are three more bunks in here that expand the total capacity to six people, although they're only used during crew handover periods when one group of three transitions to the next. Then, towards the smaller end of the module, there is a space for external experiments. This is basically a section where they can attach stuff to the outside hull of the station to collect data and crew can access the external attachment points through an airlock and hatch on the Wenxian, which serves as the primary airlock on the station for spacewalks. The crew can also access these attachment points using a secondary robotic arm on board the Wenxian. This one is just 5 meters in length, but the cool thing about this arm is that it can actually crawl around the station and operate from different locations. What's more, the secondary arm can actually link up with the main arm to form one 15 meter long robotic arm that would essentially match the size and capability of the Canada Arm 2 on the ISS. Completing the trio is the Mengxian module, or Heavenly Dream. Very similar to Wenxian, with the biggest difference being that Mengxian doesn't have any crew sleeping quarters, giving it more space for experiment racks where they've been researching atomic physics, material science, and fluid dynamics. The station as we know it today was completed in November 2022 after just a year and a half of orbital construction. For a modern space program, that's incredibly fast progress and it's a really big deal for human space exploration. The first thing that you'll notice about the interior of the Tiangong is that it looks spacious and wide open, especially compared to the ISS. Tiangong has a very minimalist modern design. What's interesting is that the outside diameter of the Tiangong modules are nearly the exact same as the diameter of the ISS modules, about 4.2 meters or 14 feet across. So the difference is in the volume of internal space available. There are a few reasons for that. For one, the ISS modules are typically much shorter with more connection points in between them that create bottlenecks in the structure. For example, the Destiny Lab on the ISS, which is the primary operating facility for US astronauts, is 8.4 meters or 28 feet long, while the Wenxian and Mengxian modules are both 18 meters or 59 feet in length. And for two, the technology on Tiangong is just much more modern and therefore smaller and able to fit into a smaller space. For example, many of the systems on Tiangong will connect wirelessly instead of having to run a labyrinth of cables all around like what we see on the ISS. 
Not that we should judge the ISS too harshly or anything, it is old. The majority of the station was built in the 90s, some of the Russian modules actually date back to the Soviet Union, so it only makes sense that we'd be seeing much more refined technology in the Chinese design. Also, most of the instruments and consoles on the Tiangong are hidden behind these plain white panels when not in use. That could be functional, or maybe aesthetic, or they just don't want anyone else to be able to see what they are working on. But it does help make the station look very clean and modern. It's like an Apple store in space. AI is moving faster than rockets right now. It's reshaping industries, automating entire workflows, and even helping design spacecraft. The question is, will you be ahead of it or chasing to keep up? That's why I'm excited to partner with Outskill, the world's biggest AI education platform, to invite you to their two-day AI mastermind happening this weekend. Two full days, 16 hours with expert mentors showing you how to go from AI rookie to AI pro. You'll learn how to master prompt engineering, use over 10 of the most powerful AI tools like Make.com and Clode, build AI agents, automate your work, create interactive websites and apps, and even supercharge your presentations and spreadsheets all in one weekend. Normally, this training is $895, but I've got 1,000 free seats for Space Race viewers if you claim yours in the next 72 hours. That is nearly $900,000 in training given away. Plus, you'll get $5,100 in exclusive bonuses if you attend both days, including a 3,000 plus prompt Bible, a roadmap to make money with AI, and your personalized AI toolkit builder. So don't get left in AI's rear view mirror. Click the link in the description or pinned comment right now to grab your free seat before they are gone, and I'll see you inside the mastermind. Life aboard the Tiangong follows a carefully orchestrated rhythm that mirrors a day on Earth. Taikonauts follow China's standard time. Their day begins around 7 a.m. with communications from Mission Control in Beijing, followed by the start of formal work activities at 8. The daily schedule is deliberately structured to maintain both productivity and crew well-being. After a morning of scientific experiments and maintenance tasks, the crew breaks for a mandatory hour-long afternoon nap that begins at 1.30. Chinese mission controllers consider this rest period to be critical for maintaining alertness during the long orbital day, which sees 16 sunrises and sunsets as the station completes its 90-minute orbit. At 6 p.m., the crew gathers for dinner, followed by one of the more familiar aspects of life aboard Tiangong, watching TV. Specifically, they watch Jinwen Lianbo, China's most popular daily news program. At 9 p.m., it's time to make their final report to mission control and then retire to bed. Each crew member gets their own private alcove with individual curtains, and each one features a small circular window with their own view of Earth. Each bunk includes a headphone set, personal ventilation system, and other amenities that create a genuinely comfortable living space. As far as the crew's experience inside the Tiangong, one of the things that really stands out is all of the footholds that are mounted into the floor. We're always used to seeing crew on the ISS just floating around all the time, but the Chinese really seem to prefer to keep their feet on the floor, so they are usually strapped in and not just free-floating. Whenever you see them posing for group photos, they are always standing up straight. Continuing with the modern aesthetic, Tiangong represents the first smart home in space. Crew members use tablet computers to wirelessly control various systems throughout the station, from lighting to temperature and ventilation. Here's a really interesting feature. The station has a lighting system that mimics the day and night cycle on Earth. The system can recreate daylight, sunset, and nighttime illumination, helping to maintain the crew's natural rhythms. Now, one thing that is undeniable is that crews on Tiangong have been eating very well. The station's unique greenhouse facilities represent a significant advancement in space agriculture. Crew members successfully grow cherry tomatoes and lettuce as part of experiments in space-based food production. The 120 varieties of food available aboard Tiangong represent a culinary program designed to maintain both nutrition and morale. The selection process is highly personalized for each crew member, with meals chosen based on individual astronaut preferences. Traditional Chinese cuisine features prominently in the space menu. We have spicy chicken, shredded pork, black pepper beef, and pickled cabbage, all among the staples. And even the station's kitchen facilities go far beyond the basic food preparation areas of earlier space stations. 
we have a dedicated kitchen table providing space for meal preparation, while a full-sized refrigerator stores fresh produce. Fruits like apples are regularly resupplied, and the crew has access to 32 different varieties of vegetables. Tiangong even has the first space microwave. Gallon's aerospace microwave oven was developed in China over a period of 10 years. Now, it doesn't sound like much, but it is a pretty big deal to have a microwave that's actually usable in space. The ISS has never had one because the power draw would be too high, so they use a food warming machine that adds hot water to their freeze-dried food packets, but it takes like 20 to 30 minutes to heat up. The space microwave on the Tiangong can heat up a meal for three crew members in only seven minutes. It had to be specifically designed not to just run on very low power, but also to survive the stress of a rocket launch. Working out is also really key to health while living in space. Crew members have to exercise for at least two hours every day. It's important to maintain as much muscle and bone density as possible, and regular exercise also helps to prevent fluids from building up inside the person's head. The station's exercise facilities are distributed across the three modules, creating dedicated fitness areas stocked with specialized equipment. The Wenxian module houses a customized space cycling machine that exercises both upper and lower limbs simultaneously. The Mengxian module features resistance training equipment, including a rowing machine. This is a little different from the International Space Station's approach, which relies heavily on a complex resistance device that simulates squats and deadlifts with up to 600 pounds of resistance. The Chinese rowing machine provides similar muscle activation in a more compact and efficient design. But here is potentially the most innovative thing the Chinese have done. Their uniforms are equipped with elastic resistance bands inside the clothes so they provide continuous resistance throughout daily activities, helping to maintain muscle tension even when crew members aren't actively exercising. Now, of course, the main reason that the crew is up there is to do work, conducting research and experiments that will help to further our understanding of life, the universe, and everything. The Tiangong now has a total of 23 experiment racks on board, with an additional 50 platforms for exposed experiments on the outside of the station. These external racks are going to allow them to conduct experiments on ecology and biology and space, fluid physics, combustion, material science, and the effects of varying gravity. For the external experiments, the Mengxian actually has a specific airlock system that allows the crew to prep an experiment from the inside and then load it into the airlock where an automated system will depressurize and send it out to the exterior where either a robotic arm or a crew member on a spacewalk can collect the experiment and attach it to the surface of the station. And they can send experiments back inside the Mengxian through that same system. We know that the next addition to the Tiangong station is going to be the Shunqian module, which will be a robotic space telescope that can operate either while docked to the station or independently in orbit near the station. The telescope is still under development, but it is planned to have a 2 meter diameter primary mirror with a field of view around 300 times wider than the Hubble Space Telescope and use a 2.5 gigapixel camera. That's the equivalent of 2,500 megapixels, and it will allow the telescope to image about 40% of visible space over 10 years. Beyond that, we already have word that China is considering another expansion to the Tiangong that will see it double in size. Chinese media reported that growing experimental demands are already placing higher requirements on the space station's available space and energy supply. And that plays into China's new ambition for opening up Tiangong to more international cooperation. Earlier this year, China's Human Spaceflight Agency announced it would be training astronauts from Pakistan to live on the station. They would be the first international astronauts to visit so far, but the Chinese have claimed to be in talks with other countries regarding flights of their astronauts to Tiangong as well. As the ISS begins to wind down and move towards retirement, the Chinese station is ramping up to become a new international platform in low Earth orbit, and life in space is already starting to look a lot different than what we've known before.